Evening everyone and welcome to Landed No FC podcast episode two and I'd like to welcome uh, someone who's become a very good friend of mine, someone who first came on the scene was my manager. He then, uh, he actually retired me to goalkeeper coach uh, but like I said at the very beginning, a very good friend of mine, I'd like you to welcome Alan Morgan. Good welcome, evening everyone, Alan. thank you. Thank you for inviting me. So, we finally got Alan up here from his hectic schedule, uh, along with all the teams he's been involved with and what have you. But we need to remember, actually, Alan came and joined Landed No Football Club. Uh, we were probably in a position worse than we are now, actually, uh, when he first joined us. And he took us probably to our, well, definitely to our biggest height uh, that we've succeeded in so far with Europa. Uh, so, Alan, very quickly, uh, just an acknowledge of thank you for coming along here. No. But also, uh, when you came and took over the Landed though at the very beginning, how did you feel? How was it going to go? What was your plan? It was um, before that, really, it was just um, I played for a job. I and mean, then that day when I walked into the old boardroom, as it as it was, and Doz and Clive were there, and I just felt as soon as I walked in, and it was the right club, it was the right club. So obviously, Frank, Frank will offered me the job, and the first game, you know, was up us, and we were bottom of the table at the time, and you know, just just went from there really. Um, it was a I can remember it now. Sun Rider Mochnand, we won two 0 at home. Peter Jones scored one of the goals. Can't. Sh- not sure who scored the other one and it kicked on for me and you know and and that's what happened when I felt it was right so and obviously and, and you know we did well after that. Did you did you have a plan when you came in obviously I knew the squad beforehand I was involved in the squad um, I knew the squad from previous did you have a plan when you came in did you did you have players in mind to to enroll Obviously, my one of my strengths I thought at the time was, you know, knowing players. But like I came into my first session, and realised I was going to give going to give them a chance. Um, I think you were in that meeting when I pulled everyone in and said, right, I'm going to get you are going to get the chance, yeah. and you know I'm going to guide and bring my my ideas. And you know, when when you over a couple of games, you do see when players who who. Are, came available and the players you know wanted to come and follow me so it was good that um i didn't you know the plan was when we does and all that they wanted first question asked him do you want to be in a watch fam and that's, that's the first time and about and, and they both said yes so and it when you know and, and going back to players i didn't you know had players which i know quite a lot from you know from the area and obviously players around the Northwest as well. So we just knew it could give the lads a chance because I'm not the type of person to go in and just to do whole all sort of changes. Um, I want to give everyone a chance and, and see what we can do and fair play to them. And, you know, they were good players here when I arrived. Did you feel it, was it a challenge? Or did you feel, well, I've got this, so, you know, I'm, I'm confident coming into this. So. It was a challenge. Do you know what I mean? I, I can't say, oh yeah. You know, say one of them, or, yeah, easily I can. But you know, it's a challenge. We're bottom of the table, mm. and my first, my first thing, you know, as I said, you know, was right. Let's get miss. Let's make sure. Let's get get us get us out of trouble, and that's what happened. You know, and, and then we we progressed from here because, you know, if people think oh, you know, to show themselves and all that, it's got to be hard work. And people know me when when I was here. It was probably fed up with me because I demanded so much of people, and <clears throat> and you don't get any of our hard work. Well, that would that would bring me back to another question we're gonna yeah. we're gonna ask in a, in a little bit. But um, at any point in that first season, did you sit back and think I've bitten off more than I can chew here? Or no, I'm, um, it's a challenge. Yeah, it's a challenge, and I people know me. I love a challenge. I want to prove people wrong. You know, that's what 
that's my thing. I want to prove people wrong and thinking, you know, oh, Clandon, Clandon, no, they're going to get relegated and stuff like that. No, not in my eyes. Mm. Not in my eyes. I was going to make sure, but I'll work twice as hard to make sure we stay in the league. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, Dodds and, Dodds and Clive gave me, like, um, in five years, was a remit to get in the Welsh Prem. You know, I don't know if I would last five years, but um, at the time, at the time, but it was just one of them where, you know, a challenge came and bought one or two players in and made us better. We got away, we got we got off the bottom and we ended up like mid tableish, you know, in the first year, which which was chuffed, you know. People who know me would turn up and they were warming up in different t shirts and different kit and I thought that's you know, that's another thing that I wanted to change though. I wanted to you know, to look to look as a team, not as individuals. So as my experience with the club and all the clubs I've, I've been with and what I've been in my career, um, coming here, yes, you did you did bring professionalism into the club and what have you, um, which I feel we've, we've carried on uh, with that and what have you, with Jordan yeah. and what have you. And again, we'll get to Jordan uh, in a little bit and what have you. Uh, so the journey continues. We gain... Promotion. Yes, yeah, so third, third year. Oh, Penakai. Penakai. Penakai yeah. away. Um, Joycey, with that, with that volley on the edge of the box. Yeah. And that was, that was in our third year. That was. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, the second year we ended up fifth. Um, in the third year of, we were planning to be in the top three, but the lads did. It, you know, the lads in the club drove on, and we got promoted. Mm. From after that promotion. We seem to just be flying high. Yeah. Uh, everything fell for us. Different players you brought in, etc. Um, and we ended up qualifying for Europa. How did that feel? Wow! Wow! I can I can picture it now. Being in that dugout um, when Lewis Buckley took our shot against Newtown and he bobbled past the keeper and went in. And I've got I've got a recollection of that. Of you screaming at him not to take the shot, in all honesty. Yeah, because nine times out of ten it didn't end up. <laughs> no, with I know, but it nothing was, against but... nothing against Bucks, but uh, yeah, I think everything changed once he did it. Once he did hit that shot. Yeah, so. it's you know it's but obviously we weren't there. We know we finished third. But it was yeah. a but it was a Welsh Cup final to be played yeah. with TNS and Avis. So, um, but. Remember it now when we all, Lewis Gordon, they all came on, jumped on. I can't remember who stood on my toes on. I don't know. Um, just remember getting stood on. I was in the middle of it and yeah. we'd all made up. But it was just, it just, everything came together. The lads, yeah. you know, it was, I'm not going to say it was easy managing them, but I didn't need to, I didn't need to, to drive a group as much because because we had characters, we had people on the training ground who demanded it from each other. I demanded from, I demanded from players, but we were, but I didn't need to get after anyone in training because if someone wasn't on it, the players did my job for me on the pitch. I think I'll have to agree with you there. You know, we, I'm thinking of that picture we had: uh, Robbo, Heinze, yeah, Dixie, yeah, uh, Jaggers, you know, um, Erds, yeah. It's, uh, all in the mix, Hoggy. Hoggy, brilliant, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it's it's memorable times, isn't it? And what have you, but it's it's something Landon Noir are trying to get back to. I'm not saying get back to Europa and what have you, but we have to strive towards that. Um, so what, what are your thoughts on Jordan? I know beginning of this season, uh, obviously himself being chairman, we're not going to hide it. I was in touch with you straight away, yeah. uh, mainly as a an old friend and a bit of advice. Yeah. Uh, you advised me on Jordan. You've been in touch with Jordan. You've advised yeah. him. How do you feel he's getting on at the moment? He's done very well. I think he's done very well. Um, keep looking. Obviously, I would like to to see more games. You know what I mean? See what. But he's done really well because I had a chat with you. And I had a chat with Jordan. I said, 
at with no means this club doesn't is still standing in a football club at the end of the season. Doesn't matter. We can we can afford like I thought I spoke to you, we said we can we can go down, but we've got to make sure as a club, yeah. But Jordan, I said to Jordan, right, your first thing is because it's two weeks before his transfer window, we shut in. And Fair Play's recruitment did well. And the team's gone better and better. You know, and if you said to me where where Jordan's taking the team to now, he's done he's done well. He's done well and hopefully we can get the job done, stay in the league and then progress from here. It's just like when I took over, you know, I mean that was a thing that we didn't want to get relegated. That's you know, but now you got a new pitch, it's gonna get, you know, this the ladies won won the league. Do you know what I mean? So it's all the feel good factors back at Landino. Absolutely. I feel I feel your words there are gonna benefit Jordan very much. Um as in you've been there, you've yeah. done it, you've advised. Um but we're we're totally aware Jordan has done a fantastic job. Very good job with uh, what he was left with. So yes. uh, a small question I've got for you. Yeah. So my career, I've I've played, I've played with managers, uh, under managers, etc. Uh, some of them, I've got to be brutally honest, I don't think they knew their their elbow from their arsehole. Uh, other managers, everyone was the mates, and he played his mates, and you know, blah de blah. What I learned from you, for me to become a manager in the academy. Uh, obviously learned an awful lot of Grant Montgomery mm. uh, who I was his assistant in the academy what I learned from you was not just managing a squad uh, with a setup for a game you managed players and you managed them out of the team and you managed them individually with respect uh, but there were some difficult people wasn't there you know yeah, we, you, and I'm pretty sure I was one of them as well but there were some difficult players and you have to be able to to teeter them in the same direction and it's off the pitch and on the pitch. So a managerial job is more than just standing around on the touchline, isn't it? These days, these days managers have got to look after everything. Yeah. You know, you don't know what what players, you've got to make sure you know what players' background is, yeah. you know, their problems, if they've got problems, they can come to you. Um, I was one of them. I was also, I was a manager, but I wanted them to come to me with, with any problems I have, and I'll do as much as I can to help them. All my players, every player I've had since, since I've been a manager, coach, assistant, you name it. You know, I want, I want players to come to me if they've got a problem. They know that. You know, I want to speak to Morgs. I want to speak to Al. I want to speak to a boss, a gaffer, or whatever they call me. and I would try and do my, do my hardest to help them. I do my hardest to help them, you know, and, and I'll always do that. I'll always be I'm, I'm that now. You know, we try his first team, you know, we're with all the pros. I was, I'm there, I want, you know, if anybody wants help, I'm there. If they want to do anything to improve, I'm there. And same here with when I was a manager here, when I was a sister manager at, at Bangor. When I was a manager, I represented one want players to come to me and go, and go, I'll, I need this or, it doesn't, doesn't have to be football, and I'll do my best for him. And and that's when you get respect. You know, okay, we had we had strong characters. We had Mark Williams, Mike Williams, we had Danny Hughes, we had Christy. Do you know what I mean? We had a lot more players. You know, who's big characters, but we knew that if they were in trouble, I'll be there behind them, helping them. And, and that's for everyone who's played for me. You know, even now. You know, if anyone gets in touch, I didn't even David with my players one one time. And <coughs> you just you just get that respect, and you need to get that. You need that respect from from your players, and you've got to respect them as well. So that leads me to the next question. I'm I'm blessed. I've got a very good family back in. Uh, a lot of other people around the club have got a very good family backing. You have got a very good family backing. Now, your family backing you up. Um, you know, we've we've been to Gothenburg, etc. We've been to every away game. Um, 
your, your darling wife has uh, been buttering sandwiches yeah. and getting them ready. Everyone's hands on when they cook. That is, I, mean, I know, but I'm asking the question for everyone that's watching. They don't realise what it takes to be involved in a football club, maybe, quite possibly. But that does help, doesn't it? So much, it's, you know, to know everyone's on board, everyone's in support. It's massive. My family being unbelievable. You know, I don't... Um, whatever, whatever gone has supported me, um, followed me. We still do it now. You know, Marine, Vauxhalls, Noma, Bootle, Tramia. Do I mean, they just support me. It's most probably, <laughs> they think if I don't follow my football, I don't see him because I'm always <laughs> at football. Do you know what I mean? It could, it could be that, but yeah. the support I've had from him, I don't think that, you know, because I'm true football, people know me, I'm 24-7 football. You know, my home, when Magella watches, watches a telly and I'm here on my laptop watching football games. Who we're playing against, who we, you know, and organise preparing for a game, you know, and and now Taya, you know, she's been brought up, you know, she's been brought up football, yeah, you know what I mean. So, and she's twenty three every day. Shows time flies. Yeah, and even even Michelle's mum and dad, Dave and Carol, you know, they 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 follow me as well. So, yeah. it's a good to have her back in. You know, we've had so many arguments on the way home from Sandino. Because if I free lose or whatever, I'm like, oh, done something wrong or what could I have done better? And, and sometimes they go, just leave me alone. Just let me have this four an hour drive. Because yeah. used to in training, I had an hour drive just to gather my thoughts or games, or whatever. And just, but you know, without their support, I don't know. You know what I mean? But they've been brilliant. So I've got a few quick fire questions for you. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Whatever you want. I'm going off the cuff now, so truthfully. Yeah. Who was the manager you squared up against that you had to beat in the Welsh Prem? Who was the one that you always thought, I've got to beat you? Listen, I wanted to beat everyone. Do you mean I want to beat Craig Harrison, Tines? I wanted to beat them. I want to beat Colin Caton, Abala. I want to beat Andy Morrison. I wanted to beat everyone. And that's and that's me and okay, Mike sometimes not have the tools to beat him. But we'll give it a damn go and the lads I had, I knew they'd give everything <clears throat> to to have a chance to beat him. And you've named three big hitters there in fairness. We've all uh played against him, uh, or been on the bench or on the management side of things. Uh, but I feel your name's up there as well. I do feel that if they were asked the question I've just asked. I think they're going to say Al Morgan. Do you? They must probably hated me. I know Craig <laughs> Harrison probably hated you. And Jock, after throwing a water bottle at him, I think Jock hated you as well. No, but he, if, he, if you ask Jock, <laughs> he threw it first. When, when, um, when he scored at their place. Yeah. Um, when he scored at our place. And, and obviously, Connors Keane. Sandy knew whoever fought it that days that we'd be competing with each other to get into Europe. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? And and you know what Jock's done for Connorski is unbelievable. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. but it was just one of them where, you know, he chucked the bottle and then Lewis Buckley scored, so I chucked the bottle. Yeah. You know, so two of us can do it. You know what I mean? So but, you know, it was brilliant. You know, every game I wanted to beat every man, yeah. Luckily people, luckily I remember it very vividly. Yeah. So we're saying that on certain managers that you were ready to go out there and beat, etc. What managers in the league did you look at and think, mm. I actually, I quite respect you, you know, um, what have you, I like the way you work, etc. Did you take anything from any of these guys? I respected all of them. You know, sometimes, you know, um, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm a winner. They're a winner. Sometimes words will get say in touchlines. Do you know what I mean? I wanted to win. They wanted to win. Um, but it's, you know what I mean, it's, I respect all of them, you know, you have a look, Gibbo when he was at, Pres Neil Gibson when he was at Prestate and, you know, real managers and Cardiff Met, Mark Hazelwood, Camarvin, you know what I mean, all, all the managers, you know, they're all 
we're all good managers. We're all good managers, but I just wanted my way and and I learned I learned as I went on. You know what I mean? And that's what you know, that's the way I am. I want to be my own man. So I like that by the way. But with Landidno, League Two, Welsh Prem, where was your favourite away day? Where did you look forward to going away? Um, listen, everywhere I won. Um, however, no. Um, Aberystwyth away. Obviously, it was a manager of Aberystwyth. And, <laughs> and <laughs> we, we went down to Aberystwyth. And I know how hard it is to go down there on a Friday night. And, you know, Aberystwyth were flying at the time. And, and I asked the lads to go to go down to Aberystwyth and asked them to have a half day on a Friday. And people look at me, where are we playing? I said, Aberystwyth away on a Friday night is a hard place to go. And, um, but we did, we, we, we like, we picked, took a minibus, drove it down, what would you be able to coach in? Um, and a coach? Coach, coach, yeah. So, so we went early, we stopped in Bala yeah. for a bite to eat. Yeah. And then we went for Ballard down to down to Aberystwyth and you know, touch wood, we did get good results down there. Yeah. You know, no, because I realised, you know, players leaving at five o'clock, travelling down there, or three o'clock, excuse me, or two, three o'clock, and I know I know the journey and then the journey takes a lot out of you. Go and play a game. Good luck, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, you know, Aberystwyth win win a lot of games on a Friday night because of because of it as well. So it was it was good, I always loved, but listen, people who know me, I'll go anywhere. I enjoyed the Half West away on when I was on a Tuesday night with Aberystwyth. I enjoyed any away game. Mm. I'd go like that's that's the challenge of that's the challenge being a manager and going down going down to South Wales teams. You know, the club the club backed me fair play, you know. We used to get um, a little bus down, you know, on a, on a Friday night and to find a Premier Inn, but lads had to pay for the food halfway down and they played for a pre-match meal. You know, that was a deal. A club said, we'll get, we'll get the hotel, we'll get the bus, but, you know, and, that, and, that, and it worked. You know, the, the, I remember how far the West away, we got beat. And it was after we won Aberystwyth, we were just on a little bit of a, you know, after coming into the league. And it was just one of them where, where on the way back, I was thinking, right, what do we do now? Do I... Tell him, not good enough. I wish I did tell him in change rooms. And after change rooms, it finished. And then we had a couple of drinks on the way home. And from then, you know, if you ask the lads, Mark Willow and stuff like that, it was a good journey. We we got a game bed. We we, we kind of grew together from our journey back, and that's kicked us on. Yeah. Years. I chuckled there when you first said Aberystwyth when I asked the question. Uh, so Aberystwyth and Carmarthen would be my favourite away games, uh, mainly because the post-match food, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the ladies at Aberystwyth yeah, Aber and, Aber and the, the cooks at Carmarthen yeah. uh, did a decent spread in fairness yeah. Yeah. Uh, and what have you. So again, another quick fire question. Without, with your career uh, on playing football, obviously you, you've, you've hit the heights and et cetera and what have you, with your career on managing football, would there be anyone from your landed no squad? Would they hit your all time eleven? The ones I played with, or played with and managed. Listen, there's you know, there's a lot of good players. You know, what I mean, I think some of them could have had. You know, I think James Joyce could have had a chance of of being a professional footballer. Um, you know, Mark Willow was. You know, we're, we're a good team. We're a good team. Um, you know, I played. I played with, with, you know, with Tramia when we were in the championship. We had some good, good players who were knocking on the door. I wasn't in the team then, but in, but I was in part of the squad. But we were knocking on the door of the Premier League. Um, so, you know, we had we had good players there and managed. I would say definitely. If you said being a manager, some of them would garden would definitely be in. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and people say because we had we had a good team. We had a good team. We don't do what them lads did, winning Hughes Gray 
and getting in the Welsh Prem and finishing third without having good players. You know, we all we all had a say. We all played a part in it, and you know, and, whew, it's you know, it's I would love you know would love to go back to that day again. <clears throat> so, what would be the highlight of your whole football career so far? Football career, obviously being a professional footballer, playing for Tramia um, as a player, um, as a player. You know, it meant a lot to me, and I'm still here working, working at Tramia now. Even though I was, it's, it's, it's with Tramia's first team now, so you know, I do, I do enjoy, you know, that side of it. But as a manager, it'd have to be planning now getting in, getting into Europe, playing wow. IFK Gothenburg because people know me. I had a soft spot, you know, watching Scandinavian football in Gothenburg and stuff like that, and. And seeing them winning your way for cup and when the teams came in, who we could have got. You know, and I said to people I would love to have Gothenburg, IFK Gothenburg. And luckily enough we did and okay, it was gonna be a hard challenge for us, which you know, but it was unbelievable. So this is the last question from me now. Uh we'll go on to some of the fans' questions after this. Uh I remember sitting in the dugout at IFK Gothenburg and I'd warmed up uh, Robbo uh, very professional goalkeeper excellent goalkeeper who I've worked with I've been lucky to work with a lot of very high class goalkeepers and what have you but I remember just just sitting there and I'd actually uh, taken my phone into the dugout and I'd FaceTimed Heather uh, so my, she could show my life that's a fine idea and you told me that as we were walking down, but I think I remember saying, Sam, don't worry about it. Uh, but as I was just panning the phone around, I looked and you just stood there and you looked up and you looked uh, looked around the stadium. Uh, there was six, 7,000 Gothenburg fans and there was 13 Landinto fans over there and what have you. And you looked at it and just, just what was going through your head then? Just, you know, I know what was going there, but to tell everyone else, what was going through your head? I was, I was proud. I was proud because from that day being a bottom of, he was great. And to that day, I just looked around and went, wow. And I wanted, I wanted more of it. And that was four years? Yeah. Four years. Yeah, it was for like, it was, yeah, it was four years because I came, I can't remember when I actually, what month it was. Um, so I was like, came through halfway through his first season and then, then two seasons, finished fifth, got promoted, got into Europe. So it was just like when I looked at it and, and obviously um, Gothenburg couldn't got any Bigger, better. It couldn't have. It couldn't have. Um, it was a ball, wasn't it? It was. You know, the lads had a very good night out as well in Gothenburg. Yeah, yeah. And us, I speak to them now, and that's all they, some of them are saying is, oh, I tripped to Gothenburg, I tripped to Gothenburg. Do you know what I mean? But, but before we stood and dug out, when we lined up to go out, they were singing their song, and he just felt all his down yeah. in the back of your neck. And all the lads looking around going, Wow, yeah. but it was unbelievable and just proud, just proud. But it, it wasn't like it was a whole thing come together. Yeah, I think you know the, the board, the players, the town. Yeah. You know, everything just came together, and we wouldn't like I wouldn't have done it on my own. You know, the players wouldn't have done it on their own. The board wouldn't have done it. The town, it just all came together. Yeah. So at that point, I would never have thought I would have been a goalkeeper coach. Coaching wasn't mm. in my spectrum, etc. But uh, looking back at all that, I've made some friends for life on that trip, and it, we'll always remember those the happy signs there. You know, I mean, uh, Levi behind the scenes here uh, was not far just out of nappies, <laughs> probably. You know, and yeah. a Adam was a, a young Adam. lad, you know, and what have you. So, and obviously Gerald. Uh, coming across with us and what have you. you know? I remember, remember G 
Gerald for Fly, we were we got a train down to Gatwick, didn't we? Yeah. We got yeah. so we're in London, Houston, all of us with suitcases and trying to go yeah. through. Oh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It just you know, and and we came. It was it was so new to him, but yeah, what a stalwart for Lance now is Gerald, you know, yeah. and uh, Gerald is you know in my book he's, he's Mr. Yeah. Lantin, though, yeah. Though. Uh, but so pleased he was there yes. to see it, etc. You know, and uh, he's here every day as well. Still, you know, uh, proper stalwart. So this leads me to a question by Victor Wellbridge, uh, who's asking, what happened in the Irish bar in Switzerland and why did you leave him? Now, I'll let you answer that because I know exactly why I would leave Victor. <laughs> but <laughs> it was give one me of, your, your version of it. You know, we so. met up with... with um... The Bala board on, on there as well, so they were showing us around, and we went for food. And next thing, we just said we're going for a drink here yeah, before we go back to the hotel. But uh, Victor didn't didn't want to come home, <laughs> so we said, Victor, you know, Grand would tell you, we said, no, we're going to go back now. And he goes, oh no, I'm on one more. Okay, so we bring him in. Then we turned around to see where Victor was. He was nowhere to be seen. So it was just one of them. He was just like. You know, that was another amazing experience for the club and for me. You know, I'll never, I'll never forget it. Well, that's good. That's, that's answers Victor's question, basically. Yeah. So next question we got is from Mitchell Knight. By the way, happy birthday, Mitchell. I know it's your birthday today, so many happy returns. Uh, who's been your favourite player you've worked with at La Did That? My favourite player? Oof. Yes, and I didn't... I didn't have all of them. I didn't have the one. Do you know what I mean? I, I never, never had. You know, I had good players. You know what I mean? I had good players, and I'd, if you said to me, Tom Dix was my captain, Danny Hughes, who's Mark Williams, Mike Williams, Danny Shaw, you know, people who've come from. You know, Dixie was here when, when I first took over. Do you know what I mean? And. You know, was I couldn't I couldn't single out one because all of them were like I've said were a team. They were my they were my team, and and you know, be wrongly me singling out one person because every one of them had a had a say of what we achieved. I think I think you've answered that very politically well. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, it's just it's cause at the end of the day. Do you know what I mean? Uh, people know, like, a new Joycey, a new Danny Shaw, a new Leo Riley from the Trammy days. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, but we just, you know, I, I, every player, I was, you know, you know, and <clears throat> if our team was here now, I'd play at their peak as they were then, you know, they'd be right up in the Welsh Prem. Yeah. Well, shadow of a doubt. So, Two more questions left yep. for you, and then we'll call it a day. Uh, you're going to be coming back and wearing a Fandid No manager's coat soon for Danny Jagger's, Danny Hughes's test yeah. Uh Obviously, you're looking forward to it. The family Can't are going wait. to be coming to Can't back wait. you Correct. up and what have you. Uh, any any tactical, tactical news you could give us for that or any... Any star-studded appearances we're going to see? Oh, hopefully. Um, I've, set, I've been speaking to a lot, a lot of them just before Christmas. Um, I said I'll contact them, obviously, next month, now April, get them in for pre-season, um, have a little bit of few training sessions. You'll have to get half of them off the golf course. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. You know what I mean? Or out Listen, the pub. It's, it's fine. It's, do you know what I mean? Yeah, we're um, really looking forward to it. Danny, he's, he's like a Sunday no icon, football club icon, because everybody who knows Sandy knows the first question they ask is Danny Hughes, and he deserves, deserves to have his special day, because he was, he was Mr. Sandy No for me, um, because every first person you go, oh, do you know, Dan, did you manage Danny Hughes? What a player he was, what a guy he is, and that's, and I haven't met anyone who would say a bad word about him. You know, he deserves his testimony, and I'm honoured that I've got a chance to come back to being up dugout again 
Well, that's the reason why we put double doors in the in the front for him, so he could get his head in. Here. Yeah, that's fine. Listen, <laughs> listen, he was he was good. You know what I mean? And it was it was brilliant. Um, he deserves it. Yeah. He deserves it. He's been here, um, and I can't wait. And and I don't think any player yet from the European team has said no to me. Good. So, good. so because he did he did put the hard work in. He did. They all did. They all put the hard work did. in and what have you. They, you know, Danny, never backed down. And fair play, Danny Hughes, as well, as easy one who scored. The only one. The only European goal standing the only scored. The only one, yeah. yeah. So, so, he deserves it, you know. And Yeah, the Gottenberg keeper's still waving at that one. Yeah, so. it's, it's, it's good, you know what I mean? I don't think, you know, okay, Gothenburg were a really good side. Yeah. Really good yeah. side, but, you know, we just, maybe naive away from home to get beat 5-0 maybe um, but but at the end of the day we, we give it a go we weren't going to just sit back and because do you know when's the next time the lads are going to going to have a go there yeah. you know what I mean so but he deserves it well He's hopefully good. it'll happen again yes hopefully but, which leads me on to my next question just to wrap everything up do you have a message for Jordan so Jordan's come in, he's a very young manager. Um, as soon as uh, Jordan was given the role, I was in touch with yourself, yeah. uh, you got in touch with Jordan, etc. Is Is there a message for Jordan or is there, you know, do you believe he's going in the right way, etc.? What, you know, I don't, you know, I need to speak to Jordan. I would like to meet him one day. I haven't met him, it's all been through texts, phone calls, emails and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, he's, at the end of the day, what he's done is seen, you know, and keep a club in the league, it's a massive achievement. Oh, it's a, wow. Do you know what I mean? I and mean, then now we just got to kind of, you know, build, build. Don't yeah. don't try to get there too, yeah. too quickly. I think, personally, for, for his age, I, I mean, we're not safe yet. How old, how old is he now? 22. 22. For where we are as we speak now, we're not safe. Yeah. Uh, a no, it's... couple of results have to go our way, etc. But the work he's put in is, is phenomenal for, for a young lad. For a 22-year-old. For a 22-year-old. Absolutely phenomenal. Again, family backing he has is phenomenal. Uh, his mother's a, a lovely lady. Uh, his sister comes to all the games, etc., and he's he's just constantly, here, constantly here, and I just think. But you need, be... but that's what you need, you know, someone who's driven. Absolutely. You know, he's Absolutely. driven, and, and then that's when I came in. I gave it hundred percent. Yeah. You know what I mean, and and if you don't, just keep believing in what you're doing, give a hundred percent. Yeah. You know and. You know, at the end of the day, it, you know, results will results will happen. Well, but if you believe in it and believe in what you're doing, and you you can honestly look in the mirror and go, "I've given hundred percent." You know, that's enough for everyone. Well, maybe end of pre-season, let's get yourself and Jordan in there, and we'll do another. Yeah, podcast. Um, yeah, hopefully be not a problem. I can do that. Not a problem. I'd love to. I'd love to. Come on. Alan, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. Thank Good you. Friend. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you.